Today we're going to be making this liquid text looking effect. It's pretty simple. There's not that many steps to it. So without further ado, let's get started. Explore a wide selection of pre-made creative tools for DaVinci Resolve like titles, transitions, slideshows and infographs like bar charts and callouts, and much, much more. Link in the description for more information. All right, so I have DaVinci Resolve started up here. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a Fusion Comp. And the easiest way to do this is come up to your media pool. We're gonna right click here, go to New Fusion Comp. It's gonna ask you what you want your settings to be. Five seconds is perfectly fine for this project. You can make yours a little longer, like 10, 15 seconds. Uh, but mine's just going to be a quick bumper of just JRTV. Uh, we're next going to take the Fusion Comp, drag it down to our timeline. Once we do that, we're going to go right over into Fusion. Next, now that we're in Fusion, we're going to see that we currently have our nodes on and we have our inspector on. And the first node that we're going to have here is the media out. This is the last node that we're going to put in our node tree to go back to the edit page or the, to send everything in Fusion back to the edit page. So I'm just going to put this to the side for now. The first node we're going to grab is a text plus tool. And we're going to grab this one. And then over here in the inspector, when it's highlighted, we're going to type in whatever we want this to be. This is going to be whatever we want our title to be. And to view it, we're just going to drag it up into one of the uh, windows and release. And then we'll be able to see it up here. I'm just going to increase the size a little bit and change the font to one that I like. Yeah, I think for the, for uh, something like this, because we're going to be doing a lot of stuff within the font itself, uh, using something that's thick is probably uh, like a better choice here. So there we go. And I'm just going to pick a color quick. I think something like that. All right. So now we have to start uh, manipulating the text itself and, you know, reshaping it. And that's pretty much what we're going to be doing for uh, everything here. We're just going to be using the same tools just in different ways or with different strengths. So the uh, main tool to for this whole thing is going to be fast noise. So we'll just drag this down and I'm just going to view it over here. And I'm just going to play around in, in the settings here until I get something that I like. First thing I'm going to turn is uh, discontinuous. I'm going to turn that on and then jack up the brightness and maybe the scale a bit. Detail down and contrast. We're going to really increase that. So we get something, something like that, I guess. And for the speed, I'm just going to make this uh, 0.1. And we'll play that back. That's a pretty good speed, I think. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a tool that's not actually on this bar. And to do that, we're going to hold down shift and hit space bar and type in this. And we'll get displace. We're going to highlight that one, hit enter. It'll add it into our node tree here. And now we just have to connect it up. So we're going to take our text. And we're going to connect that into the yellow and then the fast noise into the green and we'll view that and we can start to see where we're really starting to deform it if i play it we can see it moving around a little bit that's kind of the idea what we're going to be doing here but uh we don't want it to be this intense for the main the background uh part of it so over here in type i'm going to go to xy and then for values i found this to work really good with uh negative point zero zero one um, you can manipulate these as much as you want or, you know, play around with them until you get something that uh, that works for you. But because this is going to be the background and it's going to be, I, I don't know, the probably best word for it is like the structure of the of the font. Uh, you don't want this to be too crazy because you still have to be able to read it. So however this looks is going to be pretty much the whole shape of it. And as you can see, if I zoom in a little bit, we can see that it's subtly like wiggling around almost as if you're in the desert looking at something and you see like the heat waves. So that's what I'm going to do for that. And now the rest of this is going to be pretty much the same tools, just manipulating the strength of the displace, really. That's kind of it. When I started to create this, I noticed that there was, I would see these hard edges a lot. So I think the easiest way to combat that is just to grab the uh, text plus tool here. We're going to copy it and paste it just so we have a second one and then we're going to come over into shading and then go to layer two and then we're going to click enable 
and we're going to turn on outline and then we're just going to increase this but first let's look at this we're on the wrong outline so this outline over here we're going to increase this and the reason why I decided to do this is because we get really nice um, like soft edges there and it almost makes it like a bubble bubblish like text so that's kind of what we're going to be using here um, and then just to make this really simple you could go in and change the colors of all the elements but instead of doing that I'm just going to connect this up and we're going to change this color to let's go with like a purple there we go and we're just going to grab this display here copy it paste it connect it up using the old fast noise and for this one we're going to go back to radial and now i'm just going to play with this until i get a look that i like that is really deforming everything and i think i'm just going to actually leave it just like that and we're just going to grab both of these two now copy it paste it connect it up and for this one i'm going to change the color of this to something different so maybe like a rich blue and we're going to connect both of these up and view them and then in this other uh, displace we're just going to play around with the settings a little bit okay well first I need to connect it up there we go and that looks crazy what happened here let's just reset the whole thing there right. and maybe something like that so how are we looking so far all right i think i want to flip the colors so on this merge i'm just going to hit Control t and that'll flip the uh the connectors so now we have the blue over the pink so something like that i think that's looking all right and now we have to add everything together so to do that we're just going to grab a merge and we're going to take the uh, text and the displace and make that as the background and then take everything we just made as the foreground. If we view it, obviously it you can't really tell what you're looking at here, but how we're going to uh, get all this back together is a merge, if you're not aware. The merge is just saying how the background, so this is the background connector and this is the foreground connector, how we're going to add that foreground element on top of the background. So currently it's just like you're taking one image and you're putting the other image on top. And then we have controls over here to move around the foreground image on top. I'll just reset that. But the other thing you can do is you can also mask the foreground with something. So you can grab a source from anywhere, but we can also grab the source that we have here to, re to get it to look like the text. So once we do that, then everything is shaped like the whatever we brought in, which was that this image here, right? And remember this, oops, this image here, we had that little bit of movement, right? So now all of this has all the crazy movement that we've seen, but then it's being like cut. The, the foreground element is being cut with the back or with what we connected in the mask. And the mask is the blue there. And now we have this, like, I think is a pretty cool effect. Now you can go in there, switch the colors up, add different fonts. Um, I was also thinking of adding in, like, different uh, animations for the text. Uh, but then the easiest way out for something like this, I don't know if I like that blue. Uh, I might change that. But the easiest way to go, to, to like, get this uh, to come in or to go out would be to just add a... Um, transform so again shift spacebar transform enter we're going to connect and then from here we're going to connect to the media out because media out goes back to the timeline and in this transform i'm just going to come to the beginning here and we can move everything right off the screen currently we don't see that because we're just looking at this uh merge two as you can see the little dot there so we'll look at the out we don't see it so we'll add a keyframe to the center position for this transform and we'll come up. So 26, sure. 
keyframe here and this just 0 0.5 to come back on. So now we have this animation of it coming over. It looks okay, but we can make that look better by doing a couple of things. One, we're gonna come into the settings, come down to motion blur. We're currently on the transform. Anytime you do a movement and you want to calculate for motion blur, it has to be what, whatever node has the motion. So our, um, our uh, like liquid here has motion in it. It's not going to get motion blur because it's only going to be calculating what that node is doing for the motion blur, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to increase this a little bit. So like, let's go four, just so we have, um, this is a little bit smoother. If we have it at two, you can see it's like kind of steps a little bit. Four will double those steps. So there we go. Now you can see it when it's sitting like this, but when there's movement, you won't really be able to see those steps. And it'll save on, um, on render time and instead of increasing it all the way up. Okay, and then the other thing we can do to spice this up a little bit is we can come into the spline and then the displace. And why do I have two keyframes here? I think I accidentally made that keyframe. So I don't want that one. Uh, the second keyframe here. So you can click this little button to see all your keyframes on this current node. We're gonna highlight the second one, hit F for flatten. We're gonna hit T to get our easing in here. And then we can just increase the easing a little bit. And then what this is going to do is it's going to start here. It's going to move, accelerate real quick. And then it's going to start to slow down and you know ease into that second keyframe there. So there we go. And that obviously wasn't cached, but now we have the green line, so it's cached. So there we go, it comes in and we can see all of this. Obviously only doing eight frames right now because it's not cached. But let's come back and take a look at that one more time. There we go. And now it really is all, it all comes down to taste. How do you want this, you know, liquid-ish effect to, uh, to be on here? You can simply just come into here, play with your settings a little bit till you get a look that you're going for. Um, so that blue, I wasn't sure if I really liked it. I think I would go maybe a little lighter on it or something. I don't know. Maybe something like that. Maybe red. Nah, it's looking too much like the other. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I don't know. Something like that, maybe. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. There's not a ton to it. And then since we have this on the media out, now when we come over to here, we should see it here. And this is going to have a transparent background. So we could put this on something or we could just simply grab like a generator, like a solid. And now that it's on here, we could simply just put this on a color. And I'm not doing this justice at all because <laughs> I can't get a good color scheme. But as you can see down here, we have our uh, cache. So once our cache comes in, then it should all play back at the full resolution or full playback speed. And we should probably bring everything back to the beginning. There we go. And that's kind of it. I would probably change the colors though, because I don't think the colors look all that great. So there we go. I think that looks a little bit better. It's pretty simple. There's not that many steps to it and you can customize it to fit your needs. I think it looks pretty cool. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you have questions about the Vint Resolve, in the description, I have a link to my Facebook group. You can ask your questions there. Someone in the community will definitely be able to help you. So I think that's pretty much it. With that being said, my name's JR. Thanks for watching.